Well, mate, Bundy's been making some excellent progress over the last few days, but what I'd really like to start focusing more on is getting his guiding a lot better, because eventually I want to be able to take him outside and be able to gather up some cattle on him, gather up some wild camels or wild brumbies. Well, I've got to have a pretty good handle on him to do that. The reason why I like this exercise of rollbacks on the fence is because we're working on so many different areas of the horse. We're teaching a horse to circle, we're teaching him to pick up the correct lead, we're teaching him to stop, we're teaching him to turn. There's so many parts to it, but I can get to work on all of them all at the same time. Let's take it to another level. Let's use a stock whip now. So I'm gonna start cracking it here. If he moves, just follow him. Over the last 10 days, 10 days ago, you know, he was uh, never touched before. And every day he's just getting broker and broker and broker. And trailer loading is, is one of the last things I'll do with him uh, before I hand them off. So instead of getting them on and then figuring out you can't get them off, back them off a little bit at each step and teach them how to back off first. Down Under Horsemanship's Australian Outback Adventure is brought to you by Richie Industries. Fresh water for life. Clinton Anderson, and I have a method for training horses. Getting horses to behave is simple. It's training people that's the real trick. Join me as I tackle some of the most challenging situations with problem horses and with problem owners. So now, after we've sensitized him and got him to side pass, now it'd be a good chance to come back and do a little desensitizing. Except now I want to start expanding my tools a little bit. We've done a lot of the stick and string and the, and the uh, plastic bag and the rope. Let's take it to another level. Let's use a stock whip now. Okay, I want to desensitize him to this because remember, horses hate objects that move and make a noise. I love this piece of equipment to desensitize a horse to. But in the beginning, use your stick and string first. Use your rope. Get him used to the basic tools first. So I'm starting out just flogging him with kindness here. Now he's, remember, he's already looking for a little bit of a rest. After every sensitizing exercise, you always come back and desensitize him. And pretty soon they connect desensitizing with a rest. So I'm gonna start cracking it here. If he moves, just follow him. Just follow him. Just follow him. Desensitizing a horse to an Australian stock whip is absolutely brilliant. Talk about objects that move and make a noise, that's like the ultimate. So whether you want to shoot off your horse, you ever want to rope off your horse, if you can get a horse used to an Australian stock whip, they get absolutely bomb proof, mate. See, he's in flight mode now, which is move his feet. <clears throat> I just keep following him. Now he finally stood still. Now he started to lick his lips, I'll retreat there. So his first reaction to this was pretty normal. A lot of horses are frightened of this because it makes such a loud noise and it's swinging around their head and it's a different noise. So did you notice the whole time he was jumping around and acting silly, I did not try to stop his feet. All I tried to do was to make sure he gave me two eyes and he didn't get turned away from me. Because if he ends up getting turned away from me, then he can run away from me and pull the lead right through my hand. If he feels like he needs to move, let him. And now he stood still. I'm waiting for a sign of him relaxing. Well, if he doesn't show me one of the five major signs, as long as he stands here for 15 seconds. Good boy. So retreat and rub him. So I'll just bring him kind of closer to the center of the arena again. So a lot of people, again, want to take away the pressure when their horse reacts badly. Don't take away the pressure, okay? Maintain the pressure and wait for the horse to find the answer. Good 
Good boy. Let's change sides. You know, I can't say it enough times, you have to work two thirds on the bad side, one third on the good side. People really underestimate how important that is. Remember, work two thirds on your horse's bad side and one third on the horse's good side and you'll be in good shape, mate. Very good. So now he's figured out, like he does with all the desensitizing tools, standing still is his best option. So the last place I want to do it is out in front of him. I want him used to around this, this around his head. Because when I crack the whip from under saddle, it's gonna be above him, up around his ears. Good boy. Excellent, good boy. So that was a good little desensitizing session for him. Excellent, good boy. Remember, you gotta expand your desensitizing. Every week, you're trying to introduce new tools, new objects that he might be frightened of, until eventually he's frightened of very little in the world. You know, with a wild Brumby or a wild Mustang, in the beginning, everything's new. So they're frightened of everything. But as each week goes by, they get used to and comfortable with more and more things around them and that's just how they get quieter and broker and broker. Tired of dumping and scrubbing dirty buckets and tanks? Dread breaking ice this winter? Sick of wasting precious water and even more precious time? Then it's time to change the way you water. The industry leaders in horse products and watering have teamed up to bring you a fresh idea on watering. Introducing Classic Equine by Richie. Fresh water on demand is critical to horse health. Automatic waterers ensure it stays cleaner. So your horses drink more and you waste less. So kick the bucket and the tank. When you choose from options such as multi-head heated and insulated pasture units to premium corner mounted stall founts. And only Classic Equine by Richie offers a garden hose hookup unit for easy installation. Classic Equine by Richie makes automatic watering the only way to go for the ease of horse owners and the health of the horse. So the next thing I want to work with Bundy on is getting him much better at leading. Up to this point, all of the leading has been kind of done from out in front of him. But now I want to teach him to lead up beside me. Like a lot of people say, well, where's the correct place to lead a horse? Should you be in front of the horse? Should the horse be up beside you? Or should the horse be behind you? For me personally, the correct answer is wherever I tell him, that's where he should lead. So if I want him to lead behind me, well, that's where he's going to stay, is behind me. If I want him to stay up beside me, that's where he should be. Okay, so basically, I want to be able to dictate where the horse leads. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this string around his neck here, and this is going to reference kind of like a marker for me, a line. And I want to put my shoulder in line with a string around his neck. Okay, now a lot of people think that when you're leading a horse beside you, you want to be shoulder to shoulder. I personally do not agree with that. I don't want to be shoulder to shoulder. I'll tell you why. Because if I've lined up, and I'm level with his shoulder. He has got all of his neck out in front of me. And that makes it very easy for him to cut me off or push me around with his ne neck. I wanna be up where my shoulder is basically in the middle of his neck, just like this. Now, so I've got a little bit of his head, half his neck and head in front of me, and the rest is behind me, okay? So <clears throat> to do this, I usually what I do is I'll put my elbow at the base of the snap and run the lead rope down my hand and gla grab the rope. That way, when I lean forward and point, see, he, see how he feels that pressure on the halter? Everything I do is gonna to relate to getting off the halter. So I'm gonna ask him with the halter and then tell him with the stick. So I'm gonna reach back here, just tap him. And in the beginning, I use a fence. Because the fence, you'll notice here now that there's no fence beside me. See how he kind of steps sideways away from me? 
Well, by using the fence, the fence will block him from doing that. Now, if he gets a little worried and gets ahead of me, I just do a little circle here and then go on again. So step one in leading beside is just get the horse comfortable up beside you. So depending on how frightened the horse is, will depend on how close you need to get to the fence. If he's really worried, you wouldn't want to be right up against it. You might want to be five or six feet off it like I am here. Okay, so he's behind me now. Every time you see that string get behind my shoulder, now it's in front. I'm looking for it to eventually just be level. But in the beginning, it's gonna go a little bit like that. He'll be too far behind me, then he'll get in front of me. There we go. There we go. So what I wanna do is point. Now I might get my stick up here if he starts pushing on me too much. I'll get my stick up there. Okay, so in the beginning it's kinda all over the place. Don't worry too much about that. When you get your horse respectful and paying attention, most of your leading problems will just disappear by themselves. I want a horse to either lead up beside me or get behind me in a respectful distance. When your horse is respectful and using the thinking side of his brain, leading exercises kind of just take care of themselves. So step one is just get the horse comfortable being up beside you on the fence, okay? Every time he lags behind, I want to point with my halter. And if he doesn't get off that, stretch my arm out and point. If he doesn't get off that, reach back and tap him with the stick. Now, how hard you tap him greatly depends on how sensitive the horse is. So, very sensitive horse, you might just shake the stick a little bit. If he's a big, fat, lazy pig and heavy, don't get ahead of me. You might have to whack him pretty hard. But always start gently to begin with, okay? Now you wanna be walking a pretty good pace when you do this. You've gotta set the pace. If you walk too slow, the horse ends up setting the pace. So right now the string is slightly ahead of me, okay? Now if he gets too far ahead of me, I'll just stop, pivot, wait till he slows down and go on again. If you spend just a couple of days getting the horse confidently walking up beside you, when you go to start your inside and outside turns, it usually goes really smoothly. But if you skip this step or don't do this step well enough, it usually ends up being a bigger problem. That's better. It's not pushing on me as much there. Good boy. Now, there's a little bit of an inside turn right there. I only did that because I want to practice going down this fence some more. I'm not happy how, how he's being kind of belligerent on this fence. So, of course, whatever I do on one side, I'll need to do on the other. That's, now he's relaxing a little bit more. Good boy. Stop, back away, good boy, that's a good place to quit. Coming down this fence, he was just really pushy and wanting to cut me off and I liked that last time I came down and he kind of stopped, don't lean on me, okay, remember those studs will get dominant and pushy if you let them, okay, Bundy is still a stallion, okay, don't let him lean and start dominating you. That time when I came down the fence, he stopped, he backed up. He didn't lean on me too much, but see, even now, even just these little turning his head towards me, that's him just kind of figuring out whether he can push me around or not. When he backs up a little bit, I'll follow him backwards. So this is a good place to quit him. Now remember, whatever you do on one side, you gotta do it on the other. So now when the cameras are turned off, I change sides and do it all over again.
Future is brought to you by Richie Industries. Fresh water for life. Now, an important lesson for any horse, obviously, is to load on a trailer. When I was a kid, I absolutely struggled with this subject. I could never get my horses into a trailer. And when I say never get on, I could get them on, but there was always a big fight and a battle, and, you know, the horse was bleeding, the eye was bleeding. There was always just a disaster, even if you did get the horse on. So when I was uh, 13, Gordon McKinlay showed me this technique on tr getting horses on trailers, whether it's a horse that's never been on like Bundy before, or a horse that's had an accident on a trailer, or somewhere in between, or had problems with trailers, it works the same on any horse. So we're trying to expose Bundy to lots of different things here. You know, over the last 10 days, 10 days ago, you know, he was uh, never touched before. And every day he's just getting broker and broker and broker, and trailer loading is, is one of the last things I'll do with him uh, before I hand him off. So to begin with, I want to double check that I've got good control of his feet. So I want to be able to send him between me and the trailer, okay? I'm just practicing the sending exercise here. Okay, point. If I can't get control of his feet around the trailer, I'll never get control of his feet in the trailer. I might stand at the back of the trailer and just see if I can send him around it. He's a little bit spooky there of it. Remember, you've got to have control of the horse's feet. That's a boy. Radio. Next step is, I'm gonna get him to see if I can get him to step across this ramp. Now this is actually a really good type of trailer, believe it or not. These trailers are very common in Australia like this, kind of open top trailers, wide. Uh, this is a really good trailer to, to teach a horse to go on. It's got a ramp, nice open space, no roof on it. It's, it's probably about the most horse friendly trailer you're gonna get as far as not making a horse feel trapped and claustrophobic. Okay, so this is a good starting trailer for him. So I'm just gonna bring him up here and see if he'll just step onto this ramp here. There we go. There we go. Pressure, release it right there. Good boy. Now I'm gonna go ahead and back him away from that tray, do a little retreat, then bring him back up again. I would like him to investigate it or smell it or lick it, bite it, pour it, just do his own investigation. Now I'm gonna retreat and back him away from it. Bring him back up again. Pressure. Pressure. Release the pressure there. So at any point, your horse tries to smell the ramp, look at it, investigate it, let him. Back him away. Good boy. That was really good. Excellent, good boy. That was a good try. Okay. So we'll come back and do that again. Pressure, 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 pressure. Release the pressure. Pressure, release it. Pressure, release it. Good boy. So I'm just gonna keep him going around the same direction here for a little while. There we go, until he gets used to it. And then I'll ask him to go back the other way. Now you notice it's not taking too long to get this kind of started here. That's pretty typical if you do the trailering towards the end. You know, if I would have tried to introduce the trailer on the second or third session, it would have been a much harder task. But preparation is the key. The more preparation you've given the horse, the easier it is to teach him something new. Good boy, Bundy. Right, let's go back and forth now. Now, if you didn't have a ramp trailer, you would just skip this step. 
skip going across the ramp. But you can also simulate a ramp. Put a wooden piece of, piece of plywood on the ground. Put a pallet, put a couple of pieces of plywood on top and have them walk across that. Good boy. So at this point, I'm gonna ask him to go on, but it's very important that I don't have him go all the way on. Just a step or two, and I'll explain why in a second. Pressure, 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 pressure. There, his two front feet are on it. They're only on it by about two inches, but it's still a try. Okay. Now I'm gonna retreat and back him off it. Every time I retreat and back him away from it, I'm reinforcing that I'm not trying to shove him on this thing. There's a couple more steps. Now we have a trailering DVD that goes into a lot of detail with real problem horses on the method as well. So if you have a real severe problem with trailering horses, I'd highly recommend you get that DVD. It's called Trouble Free Trailering. Now a little bit more. Now I don't want him to actually go all the way on. What I want to do is continuously keep backing him away, backing him off it. Because just because you can get a horse on the trailer does not mean you can get them off. I've had horses in the past that, that didn't want to back off a trailer. So instead of getting them on and then figuring out you can't get them off, back them off a little bit at each step and teach them how to back off first. Go ahead and back him off. There we go. So this is actually a really good trailer for a first, to teach a horse to load for the first time. Nice and open. Not real, doesn't make him feel real trapped. We'll be right back with more from the Australian Outback presented by Richie Industries. Fresh water on demand is critical for your horse's health. Make sure it's always available when you install Ritchie Waters. We've got the model to suit your needs, whatever they may be. Get the most energy efficiency with the new Eco Fount series. Get the benefits of both steel and poly construction with the Omni Fount. Get the best combination of value and performance with the Watermatic. And for delivering water directly to your horse, there's our newly redesigned stall fount. Richie set the standard in quality when we invented the automatic waterer in 1921, and we've been the industry leader ever since. So when you buy a Richie, you know you're getting the most dependable product on the market, not to mention the best value, service, and warranty in the business. After all, water is essential. We make it easy. Now back him all the way off. He's backed a little crooked there, so I straighten him up. Always back your horses off a trailer. Don't let them get in the habit of turning around and walking off. Because even if, like, he, I could actually turn him around in here. There's enough space in here where he could turn around. But. If you let your horse get in a habit of turning around in the trailer, if you ever sell him uh, to somebody that has a two horse straight load or you have a two horse straight load and he gets in a habit of turning around as opposed to backing off, they'll try to turn around, they won't have enough room, they'll get stuck halfway around, then they rear up in the air, flip over backwards or slip over and fall under the divider, it's a disaster. So you're handling this pretty good, aren't you boy? I like how he's backing off nice and relaxed. I'm gonna tap his butt here. Straighten that up. Good boy. Now another thing you can start to do now, come on. Now that I've got him going on, you can start to kind of get him to crave to go on. And I'll do that by making it hard outside the trailer, make him work a little harder out here, and then put him in the trailer and let him rest. Okay, 
So I kind of break the trailer in into two segments. Part A is just get the horse on using an approach and retreat. Part B is get them to crave to go on the trailer, get them to crave to stand there, get them to want to do it. And you do that by making them work outside. And then what you do And the only place he gets to rest is right here. If it's negative behavior, it's all tied to the same thing. He doesn't really want to be in here. And so how you fix that is you make it hard out there, easy in here. And you might have to do it seven or eight times until he absolutely feels like being in inside the trailer is the safest place to be, in here, okay? Now, a lot of people will say, well, Clinton, my horse loads just fine. This is not a loading issue. Remember, I didn't use this technique. I didn't use this technique to get Bundy on the trailer, did I? I'm using this to get him, come on. To crave, come on, let's move. Crave to be on there. Now you notice that I'm kind of making him hustle here. I'm not letting him just flop around here and jog around. He's got to be kind of moving these feet. Remember, you're trying to exaggerate, but it's more uncomfortable to be out here. Horses are basically lazy creatures. So if he can figure out that he'll get a rest inside that trailer and he gets to be eaten, you know, and it's hard out here, he'll start choosing it. Come on, let's go. Ah, ha, ha. Now that was my fault a little bit just then. I didn't go with him enough. There we go. Now what I did like is he just kind of ran straight up there, didn't he? That's a good boy. So it didn't take him long to figure out, man, this trailer is a safe place to be. Same problem if people say, well, Clinton, my horse wants to race off the trailer quickly. You know, he'll load on, but as soon as I go to undo the back butt bar, he wants to tear out of the trailer as fast as he can. So if your horse wants to race off in a hurry, when you, when you back him off, let him race off quickly. And then as soon as, move your rear end over, there we go. So if he backs off quickly, let him do it. And then as soon as all four feet hit the ground, come on, put his feet back to work again. Okay, make those feet work. Like, we'll, I'll just lunge him around here a little bit and just see, see what he does here. Oh, good boy. That's all. So he, he offered to go on there by himself. Good boy. Rub on him here. So as you can see, it didn't take Bundy long. He's kind of lazy. It didn't take him long at all, did it? Now you notice that I didn't try to tie Bundy in there or shut the door up or any of that. I don't shut the doors or tie a horse up in a trailer until I'm absolutely convinced that they want to be in there. They're comfortable in there, they feel safe in there, they're not feeling trapped and claustrophobic, okay? So if you start trying to tie them in there or shut the door when they're still nervous about being in there, you're only asking for more trouble because shutting the doors and tying them up just enhances that trapped and claustrophobic feeling that they have. So, so if you're smart and you really want to do right by your horse, spend three or four days doing that type of lesson. Trailering, like for example, he didn't hardly give me any trouble at all putting him on the trailer, but that's because of the last 10 days of preparation. If I would have tried to make the trailer load in the second or third lesson, it would have taken me an hour and a half to get him on because he didn't have enough foundation. He didn't have enough respect for me. He didn't have enough of the thinking side of his brain developed for him to succeed. Remember, set your horses up for success, not failure.
Australian Outback Adventure is brought to you by Richie Industries. Fresh water for life. Here's another thing that I want to expose Bundy to, is getting him to track something. This is really good for the horse and a rider. Now, if your horse is frightened of any sort of uh, animal, could be, uh, you know, other horses, cattle, sheep, doesn't matter what it is, or even a vehicle. In this particular situation, we're gonna use a, a four by, you know, a four wheeler, but you could use it for a motorbike, a car, truck, it doesn't matter what it is. But there's something about tracking whatever your horse is frightened of that builds their confidence. You've seen me on tour where I'll get the plastic bag and I'll flap it and I'll walk away from the horse and have the horse follow me. Whenever your horse follows something that he's frightened of, it always builds their confidence. But when that object is coming towards them, it frightens them a lot more. So in this particular example, I'm gonna show you how I would introduce a horse to anything that moves that the horse is frightened of. Now I realize there are some things your horse is frightened of that you can't contain or create this type of a situation. I understand that, okay? But anytime you can control the situation, uh, I highly recommend you do it and teach it to your horse. So I'm gonna have Brittany, my uh, certified clinician, she's gonna drive this quad around the arena and we're just gonna pretend that could be the quad, it could be a cow, could be sheep, cattle, llama, camel, doesn't matter what it is your horse is frightened of, okay? I'm just gonna follow in those tracks. And I do this a lot at home with cattle. When I'm introducing my horses to cattle, just follow them. It, again, it improves the steering. The more he'll guide and steer, the better chance I've got of being able to control him outside at high rates of speed. So let's get started. Just follow along the tracks. And usually just pick a gate that's easy for the horse in the beginning. Just a trot. Yeah, about that speed, mate. A little bit faster. That's it. Right, I go a little faster. So he offered a lope just then. So I'm gonna go with that. A little faster, faster, faster. That's it, good boy. Faster. It's really good for the rider. Focus where you wanna go. Anytime your horse is frightened of an object, if you can have that object go away from your horse and have your horse follow it or track it, it always builds their confidence, okay? So in this case, we're using an ATV four-wheeler. We're following the ATV, we're getting the horse used to tracking something, and it builds their confidence. Now we're starting to get a little handle on it. Righto, slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down now. Just a nice walk, 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 stay there. Nice and slow, let him get up close. Just stay in even speed. Good boy. Now just stop. Good boy. Righto, just sit there, turn it off now. So now that he's confident following it, I'll kind of get a little control of his feet going around it. He's a little bit worried of it now. Okay, so I'll just do some rollbacks in towards it. Inside lane, outside leg. Get that front end to jump across. Remember, use the fear of an object to help you turn. You ready? Right rein, left leg. Make that front end jump across there. I'll do it over here. Left rein, Right leg, make that front end jump across there. Good boy. So instead of trying to ride him straight up to it, just go ahead and circle around it. This is the same thing I'd do with if it was a water puddle, okay? Or something else, okay? If he bumps into it, that's his problem. He's gotta to learn to rate his weight back and bring that front end through. <laughs> now 
Now he's got to get on the friggin' bike. You big dumb b Good boy. Okay? Good boy. So, that's how I would go about introducing something that my horse is frightened of. First, follow it, build their confidence. Then when they're comfortable with that, have the object stop and you circle around it and keep doing rollbacks until the horse is like, you know what? Uh, this is not a big deal at all. See, right now, air is his most valuable commodity. So I'm gonna make resting here near the bike seem really, really good, okay? And if you wanted to take it to the next level, you could do something like this. You could take your horse away, like say over here, okay? In the corner here. And you could do some turns here. and then come straight back over to what he was worried about. There. And let him rest right there. So this is the only place he gets to get his air, is right here, okay? So work him over there, rest him here. Just like I did on the trailer loading, I made it difficult to be out of the trailer, easy to be in the trailer. And you do that a few times, and I tell you what, that horse will, will absolutely glue to whatever they think that rest is. Use a horse's natural laziness to your advantage. Follow what they're scared of, build their confidence, then circle around it and do the rollbacks, and then after that, then get them to crave the object by working them away from it, bringing them back and letting them rest with it. Good boy. Anything worth having is worth working for, that's for sure. Not gonna make it here if you got any quit in you. This is where I needed to be the best that I could be. And that's just what we do here. Dedication, ambition, passion. To some, these are more than ideals. They are a lifestyle, a code, a path to something greater. If you think you're one of the select few who can rise to the challenge, who can dedicate themselves to mastering the method through 70 weeks of in-depth, hands-on training. Let the Clinton Anderson Academy catapult your skills and provide you with the ultimate experience. If you have what it takes, become a Clinton Anderson Certified Clinician and change your life. Now, in an earlier session, I started to talk about how to, you know, introduce handling your horse's feet, especially a horse like Bundy that's never had his feet worked on, okay? And I showed you step one was just get the horse comfortable with you touching his legs. First with the rope, then if he's really bad with the stick, if you have to, if you reach with it, and eventually with your hand, rubbing up and down. Well, from now, I wanna kinda of teach you what the next steps are. So we'll start with the front foot here. Okay, so he's comfortable here with me rubbing my hands up and down his leg. Now it's important that you vigorously rub the horse's legs. Don't be just kind of gently touching them or kind of sneaking around them, but put a little force behind it and rub them so make sure that you're really being obvious about what you're doing. So now I just want to give him a cue to actually pick up his front foot. So I'm going to squeeze his chestnut here. And if he doesn't pick it up there, I might tap him on the coronet band. As soon as he takes his weight off it, I release it. So I squeeze chestnut there as soon as he takes his weight off take it away and rub him and after he's successful at that then I just hold it up for a second as a general rule when I'm starting a young colt or a wild horse I always leave their their legs to the last thing that I work on picking up the horse's feet okay because when you do that in the beginning it usually takes a lot longer you've got a bigger chance of getting kicked or struck or injured you need to drop his leg is just to relax it he's struggling 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 Wait, he's pulling on me, he's pulling on me. Timing, pulling on me, pulling on me. There, he relaxed it. And I don't place the foot on the ground, I release it. Now, the reason I like to release it is that I want them to learn to balance themselves. I'm squeezing that chestnut, okay? So now that he's comfortable at least kind of picking it up like that, now I want to start just rubbing his leg here, okay? And then retreat. So from here, you just kind of build on it 
and hold his leg up a little longer each time. And then as he gets more relaxed, you can start to put it inside your feet, like in between your legs like that. Okay? Good boy. Right, his back legs. Step one, make sure he's comfortable with you rubbing those legs. Okay? Get him comfortable with that. Righty up. That's the boy. Now the next thing I want to do is keep a little bend through his head here, especially on a new horse when you're working with their back legs, is I want to squeeze his back cap on his hock here. That's his cue, there. As Soon as he takes his weight off it, okay, cue, that's it. Now what I want to do is just hold it for a second, then drop it. Pick it up again, and then just hold it for a second. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Go with him, don't try to struggle with him, just try to hold the foot off the ground. And try, now, as soon as he relaxed, I dropped it. Squeeze, squeeze that cap. Put a bit of bend in him here. Squeeze. Come on. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. I'm going to start to rub his leg now. That's it. He feels nice and relaxed, so I'm going to drop it. The key is retreating when the leg is relaxed. That's a boy. And now I can slowly start to get my leg underneath it. Like that. Okay, he's never had anybody pick up his feet before. Rub him, wait. He didn't like me rubbing on the inside of his leg here. So I'm gonna rub him here. When he relaxes, retreat. Rub him. That's not bad, 10 days ago, he was running wild. Look at him now, good boy. That's it. Righty on. So the smart thing to do with your horse's feet is don't try to do it all in one session. Break it over like a week. Spend a couple of days getting them used to you touching them. Then a couple of days teaching them the cue to pick up their foot. Then a couple of days holding it up and rubbing it. Then a couple of days starting to stretch it out the back and rubbing on it. So the key is, do a little bit every day and you're going to get much better results. Down Under Horsemanship's Australian Outback Adventure has been brought to you by Ritchie Industries. Fresh water for life. Over 12 episodes in Australia's Red Centre near Kings Canyon, Clinton has travelled to the furthest reaches of the Outback to attempt to meet a challenge from Ian Conway, the owner of Kings Creek Station capture and tame a wild rogue Brumby Stallion and break him in to the point where a kid could ride him. From unexpected moments to death-defying encounters, this is Down Under Horsemanship. Hey Leon, did you know these wild Brumbies in the Outback, mate? They can easily travel 20 miles a day in search of wood. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's ten past two, mate. When's the plumber showing up? Are you supposed to look at your f***ing <laughs> watch? <laughs> I ain't got a watch. Don't ask me. Just takes the plumber a long time to get here. That's <laughs> the best water in the outback you're ever going to have. No, it ain't. <laughs> That's the biggest f***ing load of bull I've ever had in my life. <laughs>